More than 2,000 years old, sumo originated as a religious rite of Japanese Shinto tradition. But it wasn't until the 17th century that it turned into a spectator sport, when Japanese warlords kept a stable of wrestlers as a symbol of power and prestige. The rules are simple. Two wrestlers face off in a ring of sand. The first to be pushed out of the ring or toppled to the ground loses. Matches typically last only seconds. There are no weight limits and wrestlers can weigh more than 200 kilograms. It's a sport steeped in tradition. From hairstyles to winning moves, wrestlers must follow a strict code of conduct. Everything is sacred. From the ceremonial salt tossed into the ring before a bout, to the stiffly folded mawashi, loincloths worn by the wrestlers. In the sumo stable, hierarchy is strictly enforced. The more bouts you win, the higher you rank. The later you can wake up for practice, the earlier you can eat lunch. Junior wrestlers are relegated to waiting on everyone else, even cleaning out the toilets. Tradition and a big incentive to win and keep winning. Could you give us uh, a description of what is life like for you as a sumo wrestler? What's life like in a sumo stable? First of all, in sumo, wrestlers are divided into two groups. The first group, those who are in the higher divisions, and the second group, those who are in the lower divisions. In other words, you're either in the group that serves the other or the group where someone serves you, the group that cooks for the others or the group that has someone to cook for them, the group that does the cleaning or the group that has someone clean for them. Was that, was that difficult for you to adjust to, coming from Bulgaria, where I'm sure culturally it was very different? When I was in Bulgaria, I was on the national wrestling team. When we went to training camps, we had everyone take care of us, doctors, masseurs. We had proper rehabilitation, medicine. After I started practicing amateur sumo, we had the same people taking care of us. Then I came to Japan, and here it is a professional sport. I thought they would really treat us well, take good care of the sumo wrestlers. Because more or less, it is a professional sport here. But in fact, when I entered the professional sumo world in Japan, the reality was quite different. Here, the situation in sumo is like this. If you don't want to cook for someone or serve someone, you should become stronger in as short a time as possible. That's the way they push sumo wrestlers here to train harder, the way they motivate them to move faster into higher ranks so that they start getting a salary. The low-ranking wrestlers, they have neither salary nor free time for themselves because they have to serve the others. The difference with Bulgaria is enormous. That's the way they motivate here. You either become a strong sumo wrestler or you stay a servant. It all depends on one's efforts. Everyone starts at the same bottom level. How far you get all depends on you, how hard you train, how devoted to the sport you are. It all depends on you. How are you able to prove yourself in that system? To prove myself, I train hard. I devote myself to the sport. And meanwhile, every two months, a tournament is held. And there you have to show how hard you have trained. Sole participation in the tournament is not enough. You also have to win in the bouts. It's all linked. With time, you get to higher ranks. So how do you prepare for a big match? All matches are big. <laughs> It's very straightforward. I just isolate everyone and everything else and just focus on the bout. Now, this is going to sound like a very pedestrian question, but it's uh, something everybody wants to know. What do sumo wrestlers eat in order to gain the mass that they have? What is the kind of special training that you need to become a sumo wrestler? Me. Well, we eat out of a big pot of stew, and we also have other kinds of food. We eat twice a day, and each meal is big, once after training for lunch and once in the evening. Of course, it's not just about your body mass. You also have to be very quick, very flexible. In fact, I've read in an article that you can even run 100 meters in 11.5 seconds. I'm not sure if that's true. Maybe you can confirm that for me. Yes, that was at the time when I entered the sumo world. That was your speed? Yeah. 
That's pretty fast. That's very fast. How do you, so then how do you train to achieve not just body mass, but that, that quickness and that flexibility? What, what do you have to do to make yourself in tip-top shape? We do a number of special exercises designed entirely for flexibility. The more flexible a sumo wrestler is, the more injuries he can avoid. You're known for being actually quite slim and tall for being a sumo wrestler, also for employing a lot of different moves. Do you think you have a very different style of sumo and how would you describe it? It is difficult to talk about a specific sumo style. There are more than 60 techniques that are used in the bouts. It's just that the Japanese wrestlers tend to focus on one or two techniques, and they hardly use the rest of the moves. Do you think that sumo styles are evolving in general? Are they changing? I don't know if you can say sumo styles are changing. Sumo is sumo. No matter how you look at it, it really doesn't change. It's just the people who come into and then leave the sumo world change. For example, the Japanese wrestlers use only one or two techniques, like thrusting only. That's the way the sport is right now. But in 10 years, after younger wrestlers join, maybe they will fight in a different way. Maybe then we will be talking about a change in the style of sumo. There's no set style of fighting in the sport. Up next, Koto Oshu on the future of this ancient sport.